it is, it is uh, tremendous to be here. I just had a quick thought before I get into another small thought, and that is Ephesians, Ephesians 1.6 says this. It says, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Any chance I get to talk to worship leaders or pastors or, or lay people, um, especially in a conference setting, I'm always struck with like, the oohs and ahs of conference and, 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 you know, we host our own conference in August called Deeper and the, all the preparation that goes into it and all the prayer and tears and, and volunteering and planning and mapping and forecasting and, and, and there, there is a temptation to get up and take all of that and, and push and strive in a way that you hope people like what you do. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. But one of the things I love about your pastor and the visionary of this conference is that he never preaches or leads or ministers for acceptance. He leads and ministers and teaches from acceptance. Selah. And I think if you take anything else away from this week, take that. That it's not something you're striving for. It's something that you are leading from. When I get up and lead, the sound could be whack, the songs could be wrong, the lyrics could be off. But I'm not leading for your acceptance. Okay, I, I got one amen. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> now, that's why this is kind of hard to digest sometimes because for the last 20 plus years in church it's always been about how can we blow the people away how can I get them to tweet about me tonight I'm cool if it's quiet I'm just going to talk because I, I leave in like an hour but when I look at this conference I look at everything that's gone into it Jared your team man phenomenal Everybody is world class. But ultimately, I don't think you hope the takeaway of these people is, wow, that was amazing. Wow, I really like them now. But that something happens on the inside of us that empowers us to realize I lead, I live, I sing, I preach, I work my job from acceptance, not for acceptance. Amen. And Pastor Charles, I just want to honor you for demonstrating that, for modeling that, for, for young leaders like me and Chad. Um, see how I put myself in your generation right there? That was cool. Nudge somebody next to you, say, lead and live from acceptance not for acceptance. Amen. I just, I just thought I'd put that out there. I love acting young. That's why I hang out with people like Chad and Chris. And, but I'm, I'm, I'm in my 25th year this year of full-time ministry. That's crazy. I'm a grandfather. I have a little awesome two-year-old grandson. But I'm only 37 years old, so I'm not sure how that all... <laughs> how that all plays. It is mercy. It is mercy. <laughs> Nothing but mercy. If you have a Bible, go to Exodus 33. Keep playing. I want to I share something before I read that scripture. kind of want this song lyric to underscore this message this morning. 
And then we're going to read this word. Clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too until the congregation's few. Then have revival. Tell your friends that this is where the party ends until you're broken for your sins. You just can't be social. Then seek the Lord and wait for what he has in store. And know that great is your reward. So just be hopeful. And the chorus says, because you could sing all you want to. Yes, you can sing all you want to. You can sing all you want to and still get it wrong. Worship is more than a song. Take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper. Beg him please to open up his mouth and speak and pray for real upon your knees until they blister. Shine the light on every corner of your life until the pride and lust and lies are in the open. Then read the word and put to test the things you've heard until your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken. Because you can sing all you want to. You could sing all you want to and still get it wrong. Worship is more than a song. Amen. Exodus 33, then the Lord said to Moses, depart and go up from here, you and the people who you have brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, to your descendants I will give it. And I will send my angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite and the Hittite and the Parasite and the Hivite and the Jebusites and the Boogie Nights. And... <laughs> Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey for I will not go up with you lest I consume you on the way for you are a stiff-necked people. Verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend and he would return to the camp but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man did not depart from the tabernacle. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Verse 12. And Moses said to the Lord, oh wait, sorry. Uh, verse 14. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, don't bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that us, your people, and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us. So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. I want to talk for 28 minutes and 32, 31, 30 seconds on the subject of presence over presentation. Presence over presentation. It is, um, it's a daunting task anytime you put on a conference to do what I was talking about earlier, to be able to have something that impacts the people, causes something to awaken on the inside of them, 
and launches them out to wherever they're called to be and whatever difference they're called to make in their lives and in their communities and in their churches. And I, again, applaud the efforts of, of Thrive Conference. Every year, man, it's just top notch. It's, it's one of the best conferences in the world. We would all agree on that. Yep. I'm amazed at how we will end up in a back room or end up at the hotel lobby and assess what happened in the service. We do it all the time. You do it at Applebee's, right? No? All right. Who's our sponsor? Sorry. Carl. What's, it? What's the place? The Mexican place. Julio's. We go to Julio's. They have amazing chips and salsa there, I, I assume. And... And we talk about, whoa, did you see when they did that one thing and then the light went like that and then the screen went like that and everybody went, whoa, it was amazing. Do you remember? And a lot of times we'll equate the greatness of a service on how our, our senses were arrested. And then, you know, the hashtag of presence of God tonight is like a, is like an Instagram shot of, you know, the light, the stage, the, the really cool moment that we're talking about. And I want to say this up front. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm a musician. I, I'm a creative. I love, I love doing whatever it takes to reach the unreached, to inspire those who need inspiration. I'm always going to do that. But I have to literally go back to the genesis of where I started, 19 years old, 25 years ago, playing drums in the worship team. And the pastor called me on a Wednesday morning and says, hey, I want you to consider being our worship leader. And I was like, oh, praise God. And I, do, I did what you say to the pastor when you don't want to say no. I just, I just said, well, I'm going to pray about that. And I, I'm assuming he anticipated that because he goes, well, pray hard and pray fast because you start tonight. And oh man, I was scared to death and brushed up the two songs I knew and was ready to go, man, and got up to lead the worship at the piano there, standing up at the keyboard, singing, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate. Y'all remember that song? The only problem was this was way before we had like multiple services and like it was just one service and that service could go three, four hours, just however, however long it's going to go, it's going to go. And so the worship portion was like 45 minutes long. So you can only sing Celebrate Jesus <laughs> so many ways for, you know, 25 minutes. Like you just go through the whole song and then be like, just the ladies now and just have them sing the whole song. <laughs> All right, the men, and then have them sing the whole song. And then everybody under 30 and... And I don't mind telling you, it was awful. It was bad. It, it ended into just a big train crash. And, and I, 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 every week, I just wished I could be the drummer again. I just want to be the drummer. That's, all, that's really all I want to do. And somebody very wise pulled me aside and said, listen, you ought to go home, figure out who you are, and not try to be Ron Canoli's like little little clone you know like be you and get with God and find out what he's after and I went home and I, I, I think I shared this a bit of this story a couple years ago when I was here but I put my piano in my kitchen and I set up like a water glass and a vase and like some salt and pepper shakers just up there on top of the piano because I wanted to be cross-cultural even then <laughs> And I was like, good morning, church. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship God in my kitchen, leading kitchen utensils in worship. <laughs> but I got to tell you something. Something happened in that kitchen on a daily basis where my only prayer was this. Jesus, seriously, I have no idea what I'm doing. But if this is what you've called me to, 
then I have one prayer. Teach me how to worship you. Don't teach me how to lead people in worship. Teach me what moves your heart. I don't want to learn the gimmicks of, you know, turn to your neighbor and tell them to tell their mama to tell the devil to tell you. You know, I don't want to learn it. I want to unlearn any of that that I've learned already. I just want to know what moves your heart. And I invited Jesus into my kitchen. And just hours would go by and just sing for him. Just pull my Bible open and just random psalms and just sing whatever I saw. And I got to tell you, the presence of God filled that kitchen. What was amazing is the more time I spent in the kitchen, the easier things got on stage corporately. It was great. You know, things were better. And all the people who said I was whack at first were like, I always knew you were anointed and all that. (laughs) And I'd be on the stage, but I'd be longing to get back to the kitchen. Like, I like being on the stage, and this is cool, and people are lifting their hands, and people are shouting, and it's really great. But, man, I cannot wait to get back home. So I have a, I have a date with, with Jesus in my kitchen. Now, granted, I'm 19 years old. It's boot camp for me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning as I go. And a few years later, I got married, and my wife decided she didn't like the piano in the kitchen. It doesn't really match. And life goes on, you start having kids, you know, you're still doing the work of the Lord, you're doing the work of the ministry, you love Jesus. And, the, and, then, and then comes this like wave. Somebody, some would say it came from Australia, you know, there was a big British invasion as well. Just great worship anthems and songs that just, man, took over. And I remember us just going, yes, this is it. And then we did the very thing that now when we host conferences, we hope people don't do. We started taking the external of what we saw and implementing that into our services. Like, we're not really going to have a great worship service unless those lights are moving like this. And, you know, we go to these conferences. Like, some of you are here, and you represent other churches, and you're somewhere between inspired and absolutely frustrated. Can I get one witness? Where you're going, man, this is awesome. And wow, that's so cool how they have the lights up on the stairs. And this auditorium is great. And I bet you if I pastored a church that looked like this, then we could really. If I had a lighting guy like like Abundant Living's lighting guy, well, then shoot. The Holy Spirit would show up every time. Am I talking to anybody? Let me break it down in an analogy. When we travel a lot to different churches and, and, and events and conferences, there was always the green room. There was always the green room and catering and, hey, we wanted to prepare a nice meal for you. and It's really great. And here's the thing. Like, I can't be, well, as you noticed, I love, I love, I love Jesus. I love my wife, I love my kids, and I just love good food, man. I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, up the road a bit, and had hatch chili every day of my life, basically. I love good Mexican food, I, I just love food. But I can't be, t- that, but I'm also picky, which is weird, because, like, I, I know I appear like I'll eat anything, but... <laughs> There are certain things, mainly vegetables and fruit and good stuff, that I just cannot be tempted with, like no big deal. No, I'm good. No, I'm going to pass on the Brussels sprouts. Thank you so much, though. <laughs> Green chili chicken enchiladas, however, I'm down. So, from, from Julio's. <laughs> we thank our sponsors. I can't be tempted with stuff, stuff like that, but let somebody pull out like some, some like chocolate chip cookies, man, like right out of the oven. Let somebody pull out like them, them cupcakes that just like, you could smell them from the next county. Like, you know what I mean? You know, am I, ta- am I 
ministering to anyone's heart this morning. We were in a green room a while back and, and um, just before we were going to minister, they said, hey, we got this lady in our church and she's amazing, man. She makes these cupcakes that they're award winning. They're considered the holy grail of cupcakes. You're going to freak when you see these cupcakes. And I'm like, yo, bring them on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> they bring them in the room on this tray and it was like angels were singing and they just like smoke and <laughs> incense. It was just amazing. And, and these cupcakes like had all this like icing and like glitter and some sort of sticks sticking out of it and like just like huge just I'm like I'm salivating you know watching it from a distance everything kind of goes into slow motion and they and I found myself going God I'm going to do damage to this cupcake I pray you bless it <laughs> bless the hands that prepared it and the, the, the chef lady, the pastry chef lady is looking and it's like everybody's got their cameras ready for the Instagram moment. I peel it back, my hands are trembling, I don't know why. I bite into this thing and all I can tell you is it was the worst cupcake I had ever had in my life. No, it was awful. It was dry and sugarless and, and flavorless and godless. <laughs> and then, you know, everybody's snapping pictures and everybody's there and, and you got to fake it till you make it, you know what I mean? I'm, there's no milk. There's nothing. And I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> And it's funny, but then I got to thinking about, I got to thinking about how Moses pushed on God and said, if your presence doesn't go with us, we're not going. What would make us any different than any other people on the earth? What sets us apart? Your presence. And I got to thinking about, it doesn't matter how good something looks. It doesn't, just because something looks good doesn't mean it's going to nourish you and wow. taste good. Wow. And I had this thought of presence, the cake, presentation, the icing. And a lot of times I've been, I've been guilty of this. I'm always going to be honest when I stand before people and say, I've been guilty of saying, it looks good, just go with it. And then get frustrated at the end of a conference that nobody left with anything. They didn't leave with anything because they couldn't eat anything. Wow. It wasn't edible. Wow. The icing's cool, but who's going to get nourished on a bunch of icing? Wow. Wow. I thought about when I was a kid. My mom, you know, we'd go swimming every day, and we'd ride our bikes, and we'd come back in the house, and my mom was awesome, man. Every day we'd come home, she'd have some fresh-baked thing, man. Was, I love her for that. Sort of. I'm working it off still, but... <laughs> She would make like these, these, these chocolate cupcake things and she knew that I didn't, I wanted them plain. Like, mom, don't ice mine. Like, let me just, let me rock it. Let me rock it icing free. And the moisture and the, ah, oh, man, sorry, I'm, I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast, but. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing and, and I, I'm reminded of that and, and, and I draw the parallel to sitting in a kitchen as a 19-year-old kid who didn't know Jack, but I knew the presence of God was there. And the misnomer of leading worship for 25 years after that is as long as the lights look great, as long as people are jumping and shouting because I told them, hey, jump and shout, I'm going to lull myself to sleep believing something great has happened. But nobody ate any cake. When I prepare for a service, if I'm not careful, I'm telling the guys, make sure we do that drum thing because that's really cool. And then make sure the lighting guy knows we're going to do a blackout right there and make sure the lyric, and there's nothing wrong with that. But 
When am I preparing going, God, what do you want to hear? What moves you? And in our westernized three-second attention span life, all of us have some measure of ADD. Mine's in HD, like ADD in HD. It's high-definition ADD, man. And the problem is, and every pastor and every worship leader can tell you, we bring that to church with us. Ooh. We do. And so we're going, as long as you move me, I'll get with you. We don't even realize that we're holding God hostage. Lord, if they play my jam, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to give you a praise. Just wait, God. Let's, let's hope. I mean, till they do it, I'm just going to stand here and, and wait. And I'm going to hope somebody plays to my oohs and ahs of my American nature of like, blow me away. Win me over. Here's God saying, I've, I've made a promise to you that you're going to go into the promised land. It's great. I'm not going to go with you, though, because you guys are crazy. You guys are stiff-necked, complaining, wow. whack people. So I'm not going with you. But there's the promise. There's the, there's, look at the presentation. The grapes are this big. The land flows with milk and honey. It's going to be great. I'm not going to be there with you. But the lights are killer. The motion graphics are going are gonna to blow your mind. I'm not there. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be there because you guys are crazy. You guys are stiff-necked because you complain about everything. So you guys go ahead and go. And have a great conference. Have a great service. Love you guys. <laughs> and Moses is like, no, 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 no. We'll be in a kitchen with an untuned piano. Just show up. Yep. Just be with us because if... If you're not with us, we're just going to have cool lights, cool sound, cool graphics, a bunch of icing, and everybody's going to leave sick. In recent years, I've had to repent for saying, I'll just take the icing. I'm not going to really prepare for what you want, God, what you're after. I'm going to sing the seven songs that everybody wants to hear. I'm going to go on Instagram after church and see who tagged me. And it's going to be great. Now I'm on to the next. And I had to repent for that. I had to repent for the spirit of entitlement that crept in somehow. That it became about me. I don't know when that day happened, but, but I know in my vocabulary, what used to be a get to had turned into a got to. Wow. I know that what started out as empowerment had somehow soured into entitlement. Wow. Wow. I realized I wasn't nourishing people. I was giving them icing. And, and the sad thing is some people just don't know better. But you do. When you go home and you're by yourself, you do, I do. And I've had incredible encounters with God where he'll practically transport me back to that kitchen and say, I really enjoyed my time with you when you weren't a professional Christian. When you didn't know anything, when your only prayer was, God, my leg is shaking out of control in worship and I just need you to be with me. I love how your pastor started his message this morning saying, God, please help me. This guy could do it off the top of his head, no problem. This is, this is, this is old hat in one, in one way, but every time he gets up, it's fresh. Because he wants to make sure you get the cake and not the icing. And my prayer 
And my challenge to every person that, that maybe you're not in ministry, you, 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 you attend this church, you, you come through these doors every week, that you not hold the worship team hostage, that you not hold God hostage, you not make us work four times harder than we need to until we get to the thing that you like. Is this okay, Pastor? But that, what would happen if we came through the doors with this get to mentality? I get to go to church. I get to give. Nobody has to coerce me to give. It's what I do. It's who I am. I get to sing along. I may not know the song, but, but I'm in. This is not about, this never was about me. It's sort of like the two guys out fishing and the guy's about to cast the line and before he does it, he puts the bait in his mouth. And he says, hmm, I think the fish are really going to like this. That sounds ridiculous, right? Would you ever put a worm in your mouth going, this is good stuff. I think the fish are going to like it. No, because it's not for you. It's, it's for them. Pastors, I came across this incredible revelation that I was sharing with a bunch of pastors and worship leaders. I think your pastor was there, actually. And I was asked, like, so how do you guys, you know, really go into Sunday? And how do you make sure that you come away with, you know, really having encountered God? And, and you know, really you, you change as well. And I said, what we've realized is that Sunday morning is actually not for us. Amen. And it was, it was quiet because I think we believe. I've come to church. You should be honored that I'm here. I might even give some offering today. I'll hook you up, Right. You should, you should move me. You should entertain me. You should make something really great happen. And we bring that pervasive spirit into the house of God. And we forget he's not the guest that we're inviting into the room. He's the host. He's invited you into his presence. So what is my mentality when I come through the door? What would be my mentality if I was invited to the White House, whether I support this president or not? It would be reverence. I wouldn't treat him like he's the guest. He's the host. How much more when I come into God's house do I say, Lord, the power went out. The lights are crazy. The drummer's nuts in just about every church I've ever been to. <laughs> Except for this one. This drummer's awesome. <laughs> but what is our takeaway today? God, what do you want to hear? You know, some of the greatest moments I've ever had in worship was when everything fell down. Marcos, you can relate to this. Power goes out, whatever it is. And, and you got thousands of people there going, come on, man, let's go. And there's this thing that rises up where it's almost like handing God the microphone and he's like, finally, thanks for letting me speak to these people. <laughs> Had to turn your freaking power off to get your attention. We're blaming the devil for it. Devil, you can't have our power. And God's like, the devil's not here. He's in Haiti right now. He's not omnipresent. Stop blaming him for your sound issues. I want to speak. I want us to be marked every time we come into this house, but more importantly, when we leave. That we are a distinguished, set apart, different, peculiar people because of the presence of God. That's it. I'm so far off, off book right now, but I just felt, I felt to say, I would much rather touch something eternal than something temporal. Any, any tech head in this building can tell you these lights are cool, but next year those lights won't be cool anymore. There's going to be some other smaller, cooler, brighter, faster thing. But his presence is forever. His presence is eternal.
I'm going to close with this story. I was doing a radio interview a couple years ago on a gospel syndicated thing, and the lady said to me, hey, so-and-so is considered the queen of gospel, and so-and-so is considered the king of worship, and so-and-so is considered the prince of praise, and you've been at this for 20-plus years. Like, what should we call you? And I thank God for grabbing my tongue because there's, there's, there's this kink in me that goes, why are we giving all these titles to people when Jesus is the Prince of Peace? He is, he is the King of all, right? Thankfully, I didn't say that. I could say that here because I'm family. But I said, so I was about to say, man, that's all whack. I don't, you know, I just want to serve God. I just want to be a friend of God, whatever. And, and, and instead, this is what came out of my mouth. I want to be the court jester of worship. And this poor lady really wasn't up on her medieval times, you know. <laughs> so she's just looking at me. And of course, on radio, four seconds of silence is forever. It's just... And I go, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, back when, right, the, 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 the armies would go out and the king would get reports that, you know, we're getting slaughtered out there. It's terrible. It's crazy. And he would, like, go into depression, like, and there wasn't Prozac then, you know, so <laughs> he would call for the Corchester. And, you know, the, the, the ushers or the henchmen would go, knock on the court jester's little house and go, hey man, grab your hat and grab your shoes and grab that little guitar that you play and come on, the king needs you, right? So he'd come and his job was to entertain the king. And I said, that's really all I want to do is entertain the king. But I got to thinking about our typical Sunday mornings. This is just a, a look at the way worship leaders think sometimes. First of all, it could be powerful in the room, Right? And yet, we're always going to see that one guy who's, you know, his wife forced him to come to church that morning. It's 8.30. He's looking at you like, I don't know you, but I hate you. And <laughs> I'm going to keep my arms crossed like this. And everybody else can be like, Jesus, yes. And, and as a worship leader, you're just drawn to dude. <laughs> this guy here, you can't, what's your problem? And you, you literally want to have like a Tourette's moment and just go, Let's go off on him. Come on, man, we're talking about Jesus who saved you. What's your freaking problem? <laughs> it happens. Leading for acceptance, not from. But I got to thinking, if, if, if the guy back in the sound booth is considered the king and the king has summoned me to come and entertain him, if I go, hey, I'll be with you in a minute, but I noticed brother, brother so-and-so is here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing something for him real quick. What would you like to hear? And I noticed that, you know, one of our top tithers is sitting near the front, and she would probably love to hear a hymn, so let me throw a hymn in real quick. And, I, and I'm going to get to you, King, and, but I, I want to make sure my oohs and ahs are are in order. Like, I want to make sure I, I feel good about this moment. I want to make sure, like, I, my ego is built, you know, in a healthy way, and, and then I'm going to get to you. At some point, the king is going to get frustrated. And he turns to his henchmen, and he just goes like this. That means off with his head. And I said to her, I said, I appreciate all the titles we put on people and all the efforts we make to entertain people. But the truth is, we have a lot of headless worship leaders roaming around this land. They don't even know they've lost their heads. They're far more interested in the presentation than they are the presence. And I would rather fall on my face I would rather not do a great job, but get the king to smile. If I could get him to go, I like that. Ooh, sing that again. And it really, 
it really brings me back to a place of being in the kitchen where I could hear him going, ooh, ah, I like that. Ooh, that's good. Sing that again. And at some point you realize I'm here for an audience of one because it's not my responsibility to move you. It's his good pleasure to move you. It's his good pleasure to change your life. My, my little vocal riff and my little moment that I worked on with the band all week is not going to change your life at all. But his presence can. His presence can touch you in a moment that, that it becomes possible to live in the presence of God every day. Not just when you come to church. Matter of fact, this is just a filling station. And you get to pour that out all week and you come back and get filled again. And you walk in a life of thriving. Not just fill up to fill up, but there is something being released. Walking in the presence of God, touching something eternal. My question for you, are you satisfied with just icing? Or do you want the cake of his presence? The main course. Luke 10, 38. You know the story. Martha's in the kitchen. Mary's at the feet of Jesus. Martha catches an attitude. Hey man, tell her to help me. We got a lot going on. We, we got conference this week. What's the deal? And Jesus said, Martha, Martha. Anytime he says it twice, man. You're, you're busy with much serving. You're distracted with much serving. But Mary has chosen to partake of the main course. And it's never going to be taken from her. My challenge to every one of us is press into God tonight. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, through the weekend. Let's come into the house with this, I get to be here. I'm not waiting for something to happen. I'm bringing something with me. I'm pushing on this atmosphere until something happens. I'm not waiting to respond to something. I'm going to come in and initiate something. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. She could have just stood on the sidelines hoping that he'd come touch her. But instead, she pressed her way. Think of the guys who ripped the tiles off the roof to lower the man to get to Jesus. They weren't waiting for something to happen. They were pushing on something to happen. And I wonder what would happen in our churches if everybody came in the building, especially those who know better. It's like I love ministering to unchurched people because they don't know better. And they don't speak Christianese. And you could say fresh anointing. They'd be like, yeah, I don't know what that is. Is that a new shower gel? Or like... <laughs> And we speak such fluent Christianese that we've almost kind of like learned the handshake. And as John was saying last night, oh, I'm blessed, highly favored, praise God. No, it's all good. And, and I kind of like talking to like unreached, unchurched people because it's like fresh and it's cool. And, and, and when they do lift their hands, it's like an event. It's like, oh, I want to know. And then some of the seasoned, mature saints, we like got to, we need a forklift for you. All right, God. And I'm praying, I'm just praying, and I'm, and I'm praying in, that the revival starts in my own heart, in my own life. That I come on this altar, and my leg shakes again like it did when I was 19. And I say, God, we've got a plan. PCO told us exactly what we got to do today, and it's all good. But, man, feel free to shock us. Feel free to surprise us. We don't want to forecast how we think you're going to do it. Come, Holy Spirit, and let your presence saturate this place. And if the lights don't work, and if the sound is whack, just show up. Amen. Let me just pray for you and we're going to transition.